So, I'm about to go on a I Miss Wrestling tour slash I Love This Shit tour slash Help Me Fall In Love With Wrestling Again tour slash uh, I Need Some Sort Of Therapy and Get Out Of The House tour. Um, and I'm gonna hit uh, about five or six shows in a matter of 10 days, do a seminar, do a show, some in front of nobody, some in front of some people. And it's really not about that, uh, about the fans uh, or anything like that. It's about just getting in the ring. It's about getting in the ring and trying to find my love and my passion for professional wrestling again. It's trying to uh, hit the indies and meet some of the guys and girls that are on their way up or that have been there for a while and try to feed off their passion and, 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 and teach them my passion essentially and try to just vibe off each other um, and while we're on the trip enjoy the towns see the people um, but it's really it's really a, a personal thing to me uh, for the past three years I haven't had the ability to really enjoy professional wrestling or love professional wrestling and it really kind of made me sad and after getting released uh, in April of 2020 uh, I felt like I spent a long time there wondering whether I even wanted to do this. And then uh, having been locked in the house and locked down <clears throat> because of this virus, this pandemic, I needed to uh, I needed to feel that love again. I needed to feel that uh, emotion for professional wrestling again. And there was no better way to do it than to just hit the ground running and to go into these towns and to just meet these people, talk to these guys and girls, have these matches. Like I said, sometimes in front of nobody. Uh, that doesn't matter. That's not what this is about. It's about uh, it's about reconnecting with what I love. Ah. <laughs> You're very excited. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna miss you. I think the hardest part of this trip is going to be um, leaving my wife and kids for 10, 11, 12 days, however long it takes. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a, a while since I've I, I've taken that much time away from them and so um, and we've been together for so long in the sense that with this with this quarantine and lockdowns and virus like we've been in the house so it's just <clears throat> it's just been me Maria Freddie and Carver all the time all the time all the time and so we really started to bond and me and Freddie have such a strong bond and me and Carver are really just starting to build that bond and um, it's gonna be tough, it's gonna hurt. Uh, my wife's my best friend and I genuinely enjoy having her around me. She's she's my muse, she's my, my soul, she's my rock and not having her there kind of uh, to be my foundation is going to be very difficult for me. I just have to fax that and get the, the physical from the doctor. For a fake sport, huh? <laughs> for a sport that I... <laughs> Do you, do you get like extra money if you no, win? I think I need to tell them that um, pro wrestling does not need an athletic commission. I mean, I would understand if it was like a part of stunts. Like, if it was stunts, that'd be great. But that would mean we were part of that union, so no, it's just, we would get the benefits from that. Wrap. They're working the workers. They are working the workers. I don't... That doesn't make sense to me. I mean, if the outcomes were like based on you know actuality i would get it but like i don't i don't understand it's like hey shakespeare in the park <laughs> you must make sure give me your blood work for shakespeare for the for the murder scene oh boy well i threw my husband out of the house so um well, um i think ink yeah uh no uh, mike really missed wrestling what so wrestling? Uh, uh, I'm so what did we do we told him to go wrestle just don't come home because there's a coronavirus. So Mike's gonna go around uh, the West Coast slash the South and do a whole bunch of shows, um, give some seminars, wrestle mm -hmm. in the style he wants to wrestle. He wants to wrestle. And then he's gonna get tested a couple of times and then he's gonna come home. He's gonna come home. He's gonna take all the precautions that he can. Because if not, I would spank him. Spank him. Good. So I think um, for him, it's kind of like a for love of wrestling <gasps> tour. Uh, bye. 
So for him, it's getting back out there, remembering why he loves pro wrestling so much. Um, and also blowing off some steam that he hasn't really been able to do because uh, there's no shows running. So because there's not a lot of shows running, he wrestles once every two or three months, which isn't enough for a guy that was barely wrestling when he was in WWE. He's gonna be gone for, let's see, Daddy leaves today, and he'll probably be back on the 22nd. What? So he'll be gone the 11th, mm -hmm. 12th, mm -hmm. what comes next? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and he'll probably be back on the 22nd. So that is, I didn't count, um, something like 11 days. 11 days, 11 sleeps. And I know there are gonna be days that I'm on the road and then I'm just incredibly sad. And FaceTiming is just not gonna cut it. And I'm just gonna wanna see Carver and grab him by his cheeks or see Freddie and just give her a hug and, and tell her that I love her or tuck her into bed or be there when she wakes up in the morning. Those parts are gonna be tough. Waking up in a hotel and knowing that my kids aren't right there and my wife's not right there. Uh, it's gonna be a struggle, but you know, it's one of those things when you get into wrestling, even though I wasn't married and I didn't have kids when I started wrestling, you know it, you expect it. Uh, it doesn't make it any easier, but it's kind of one of those things like you you understand the deal when you sign up as a pro wrestler, when that becomes your, your career, you understand the deal that this is part of the sacrifice, that you're away from your family a lot. Um, and so, again, I've been blessed in the sense that Carver was born and I got to spend so much time with him, time that I didn't get to with Freddie. Um, but, you know, it's gonna be really tough to leave this time. And that, that's the one part that I think is gonna hurt the most. I think after he gets back, I might have to go do three or four days down in Florida just by myself, doing photo shoots. Um Cold, we changed his tire, so call triple A. Hey, why won't you be in here? Um, no, you're climbing here. He came in here. Where is he? He wanted to see you. I like the paint. Paint? Can I paint? It's up to mine. It's out of my jurisdiction. 
Lunch. This is always the hardest part of any trip. Uh, and I feel like as the kids get older, it gets more difficult as they start to realize that daddy's leaving and he's not coming back for a few days, or in this case, 11 days. Um, but, you know, I think both me and Maria know this is something that should be done and we need to do. So, it's just a sacrifice. You know, I've made a lot of sacrifices in wrestling up to this point and this is just one of many that you just kind of tend to uh, get, get used to after a while, I guess. I don't know if you ever get used to it, but you put up with it. Well, that sucked. They just came unglued after I left. Or at least Freddie did. Never fun. I think that's the first time she's like, actually broken down because I was leaving. Like I said, it gets harder the older they get because I think they start to realize how long they're going to be away for. Which really blows. To put it bluntly, but... So life we chose, right? At least I chose, or maybe my wife chose. All right. Let's do it. This idea all kind of came about when I was just trying to figure out how I could keep wrestling during this pandemic and keep myself active and keep myself motivated um, and to keep the love alive because one of the things that's going on right now is I work for Ring of Honor Wrestling but because of all the precautions and because they're doing everything extremely well and safely, we're only wrestling like twice every two months. and you feel that love and you feel that passion while you're at the shows and while you're in the Ring of Honor bubble, but then you get home and you get antsy because you, you felt that love and that excitement and that soreness and that, that, that motivation and you can't keep it going because you're only filming so often. And so I was trying to figure out a way that I could keep that feeling going and keep it alive and, and just really show people that uh, Mike Bennett is all about professional wrestling. I feel like it's a mix of a lot of things. It's a mix of being bored during COVID. It's a mix of uh, my wife being annoyed that I'm constantly talking about being bored during COVID and wanting to wrestle more. But it's more of a, I, I guess, a, a trying to rediscover my love for professional wrestling or my what's my next goal, what's my next dream. I don't know, I spent uh, 20 years of my career trying to be a WWE wrestler which I achieved and then it's not what you expected or it's not what I wanted I don't even know what I expected but it, it's just it wasn't what I wanted um, it just wasn't uh, it's like the Wizard of Oz you search and you search and you search and then you finally find it and then you pull the curtain and you realize it's just a man behind a curtain that's pulling the strings and it's I don't know I, I kept telling my wife after we got released and fired in uh, April I was like, I feel like I'm grieving, not because I'm sad that I lost my job. I'm grieving because my dream was fake. It wasn't what I expected it to be. And I feel like you hear that story a lot. And so when you have tunnel vision for like 20 years, I gotta be a WWE wrestler, I gotta be a WWE superstar, and then you get there and that tunnel vision just explodes. Uh, it's freeing, but it's also incredibly scary all at the same time. And so I'm kind of on this trip to go to the indies, any indies that I can do, um, and just have matches with guys and try to re relight that fire. I mean, I, I don't want to say I want to relight it because I feel like it's still there. I just want to, I don't know, I just want to, I just want to wrestle again. We're heading on this trip and there's clearly a worldwide pandemic. There's clearly a pandemic in this country. Um, but at the end of the day, you still go to work and you still gotta work, you still gotta just go and do your thing. And I understand that there's, um, there, there's people that are scared, there's people that are concerned, there's, there's, there's the unknown, but you take precautions, you do your best, but uh, people still gotta get up and they still gotta go to work because the bills still gotta get paid and uh, the babies still need to be fed and the house, the mortgage still needs to be taken care of. So you still gotta go. And as scary as that is, and I'm a big, I, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly terrified of this, this virus and this pandemic, I'm not gonna lie. It's not, I have parents that are at risk. Um, they're in an age group that's at risk. So it's, you, know, you have kids and anytime you have kids, 
it's regardless of whether this pandemic or this virus affects them less or, or whatever, it's it's still scary. You never want to put your kids in a position of of, uh, of peril or anything like that because you're the cause of it. Uh, but all I can do is, which I, which is what I'm going to do on this trip, is is take all the precautions. I'll double mask. I'll uh, wash my hands, socially distance, do everything, hand sanitize, everything that I possibly can do to keep myself safe. I'm a, I believe you can always control what you can control. And that's what I can do. I'm never gonna be able to control anyone else. Um, but on top of a pandemic, there's also supposedly a terrible winter storm that's gonna come through Texas and Oklahoma City and all those places down there, which never happens. I was heading down there to get it good go into the warmth from Illinois uh, and instead apparently I'm heading into negative degree temperatures an ice storm a snowstorm um, but you know what again that's part of the story uh, yeah we are I think we're um, yeah there it is there's the arch we're on the outskirts of St. Louis where I made my WWE debut uh, God, I don't even know what they call it anymore it's like the Scots gardening center or something like that no idea, but uh, yeah, here we are, return to the scene of the crime. <laughs> this journey, this this trip, this whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, I really, I don't know what to expect. I don't know if it's going to make me fall in love with wrestling, I don't know if it's going to make me hate wrestling, I don't know if I'm going to get halfway and not want to do it, I don't know if I'm going to want to... Uh, be so energized that I want to keep <clears throat> keep moving forward. Uh, I'm I'm genuinely excited to figure out what the emotions are going to be along this trip. Are they going to be happy, sad, angry, frustrated, determined, motivated? Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be this whirlwind of emotions, which is kind of what I want, which is kind of good because the wrestling industry has always been a whirlwind of emotions for me. So I have a feeling this is going to be no different. Um, so yeah, I, I, like I said, I genuinely don't know what to expect. Uh, I have hunches, but I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to think about them because I want everything to just kind of happen the way it, it's supposed to happen. I want the good, I want the bad, and I want the ugly. Everything rolled into one because that is professional wrestling. <clears throat> That's independent wrestling. I want. I want all that. You know. Speaking of independent wrestling, we're currently in a locker room which is incredibly noisy but that's that's the fun of this trip that's that's what i'm looking forward to the most it's that engagement and that feeling of 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 what i used to have um that i feel like i lost and so um yeah i i don't know what to expect but i'm super excited for it we're in uh, springfield missouri first stop of the trip time to get some sleep because i'm an old man and i have kids and it's freezing. Sucks. This weather is the worst. I literally hate traveling in the cold and the snow. But hopefully when we get to Texas, it'll be nice and warm. But I'm not feeling very confident about it. This is awful. Terrible. This is the shit they don't show you when people are on the road. This terrible weather. Ugh. Oh. All right, here we go. We are officially in Texas. The first stop of this, what, 10 days? 10 day trip we're on? And uh, we're close. About 25 minutes from the hotel, and then hotel to the building. And uh, yeah, these last 25 minutes usually take the longest of the entire 13 hour trip. And I'm trying to hold on to this pee so I don't have to stop again. Too much water, which is the joys of travel. I just, you know, the one thing I miss is just seeing everything and seeing people and feeling like I'm accomplishing something and doing something. I've spent my entire adult life on the road. The road is essentially my home. And so it's just nice to feel like I'm at home again, going somewhere, doing something, and doing something that I love. I, I, I can't explain it because I know some people hate travel and hate the road. And like the idea of being in a car for 12 hours sounds miserable, but uh, it's what I grew up on, so I, I love this. I love going to the hotel, then the building, wrestling, feeling like I accomplished something, and then traveling again. It's just, uh, I think you gotta be a little insane, and uh, I feel like I'm a lot, I'm a lot insane.
We got this truck that's gonna try to hit us. I mean, are we still in Dallas? Where are we? Who the hell knows? What's up, man? Again, How are you? Good, man. We met a warrior, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. I thought so. So I told, did he tell you what happened that was crazy? No, I don't think so. The day we came to an agreement, I was in Ottawa. Come on. No, I'll show you the hotel thing. I was just traveling. You were in my business. fucking town? I was in your town. And the only reason I knew uh, that you guys lived there, right. you had told me you lived in Illinois. Right. But it was because Maria tagged me in a post. Okay. And I just happened to see Ottawa. Was yeah. Like, that's a fucking god thing, That's man. That's so weird. <laughs> yeah. That's so fucking weird, Here, man. Here, I got you, man. Are you sure? It's heavy. I'm sorry. No, missing. I got yeah. t-shirts. Yeah, no, good. Get your merch in, man. Yeah. I'm so glad we got this worked out, man. Oh, thanks for having me, dude. Yeah. Dude, honestly, it's just such a pleasure working with you because, like, your passion is just... Oh, well, thank you, man. Oh, it's, in it's contagious, man. <laughs> First show was great. The only crappy part was they just told me they're gonna be doing more tanks here, so we're gonna have to rearrange. Yeah. But it's a, that means awesome. good business for them, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh yeah. More tanks, me too. Oh yeah. So it's a good show, man. This is cool. This is the first time for me, so this is pretty awesome. Uh, but you can you can definitely smell the beer. Uh, maybe I'll have a sip right before the match starts. <laughs> this is a cool building, though. I'm super pumped for it. I can't wait. This is awesome. My problem was always pain pills, so alcohol I just don't like, and I don't really like the smell, but it's kind of a cool setup, so I don't really mind. It's just cold. What the hell? It's, it's probably about the coolest place you can be because nothing goes better than beer and wrestling. <laughs> so it's, we get a really cool crowd because you get a mix of people that come up here to the brewery, they like the craft beer, and when we start putting up posters and stuff, they're like, oh, that sounds kind of cool. So they're not always, we got a good mix of people that aren't wrestling fans and people that are diehard wrestling fans. And so it really works out for good crowd reactions. They're very genuine in that way. Uh, well, supporting local businesses, you know, they've got a great space. They can, uh, their, uh, their first event here was absolutely awesome. Broadcast on Fight TV. Having Mike Bennett here is a, is a step up, you know, it's, it's a step up in your game. Having somebody with his knowledge, having somebody with his experience definitely brings something new to the table. Definitely has a uh, gives a lot of people a leg up on other independent promotions. Met Mike Bennett backstage at Warrior um, in the August. Couldn't be more professional. Uh, came up to me, a nobody, shook my hand. He didn't even know who I was. Uh, I consider that a huge sign of respect, and uh, I, I just think Mike Bennett's one of the best guys in the business. Super professional, um, super good worker. I mean, that goes without saying. And his promos are good. Everything about Mike's awesome. Plus, he's just a great guy. I like talking to him. He is working uh, Cam Cole, who is currently uh, Booker T's Reality of Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Um, Cam Cole is. You know, I don't want to hype him up too much, but he is one of the best prospects I've seen. Uh, he is, he's going to be a star in this business. I think this is going to be a, a really good opportunity for him. Um, or Mike might steal the title. Have to work some more shows in Texas that way. I'm the current Reality of Wrestling Champion. I'm Cameron Colt. I'm a wrestler here from Houston, Texas, and tonight I wrestle Michael Bennett. And it's a big honor because growing up I watched him and I, I took a lot of things from him. So tonight it's kind of full circle when me and Michael wrestle in a it's going to test me, but I'm ready for that test, and tonight I hope I earn his respect. Uh, you know, when I look across and see all these guys and girls here, I see myself. It's really cool, man. I think that's one of the reasons why I came back to the Indies, was because I see myself. I see guys and girls that absolutely love this and just want to do it, and don't want to deal with the bullshit that it comes with everything else. 
Uh, and that's kind of where I'm at now. I just don't want to deal with the bullshit. I want to have fun and wrestle and not not deal with the crap. And this is cool. This is fun. I, I can feel the vibe and the energy in this room and I love it. It's awesome. All right, I gotta go to the locker room. Okay. Okay. Love you, Love you too. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. All right. All right, guys. This time we need all talent to the locker room. All talent to the locker room, please. Thank you everyone for uh, being here tonight. Um, weather's cold, but we're gonna have a good night tonight. Like, this is gonna be, for those of you that were last time, we're triple tickets sold for pre-sale. So it should be a full house despite the weather. It's gonna be a great night. Um, just a couple rules real quick. Um, I kind of consider my show, uh, I like to do, call it Ring of Honor, not ECW. So like, I'm cool with like PG-13, borderline, you know, TBM. Uh, just please don't say shit, fuck. Stuff that'll get you canceled. Um, yeah, bitch is fine. Actually, I don't care. But just try not to do anything that gets you uh, in trouble with the internet. So. something go to post me I'll stop yeah. turn kick uh, throw it down and then fuck my arm off. You can even do it to where if I do that and that's your chopping arm. You could yeah down. I'm wondering if there's something where like you chop and I chop the fucking post. almost here I'm excited it's still cold that's gonna be the theme of this trip is how cold I am uh, I just I'm excited man it feels like I'm uh, feels like I did 10 15 years ago when I first uh, was on the Indies and like I don't know I just look around and I see everyone excited and, and motivated I'm just so sick of grumpy people in wrestling and you come here and you get to see all these people happy and excited so I'm pumped. Crowd sounds good. I'm ready. I'm ready to get the crap kicked out of me and kick some crap out of someone else. So as soon as I can warm up. Ah.
tonight I'm coming out to uh, Last Resort by Papa, Ro Papa Roach. It's a um, theme song that my, my trainer and mentor, Steve Bradley, used to come out to. Haven't never had the chance for me to come out to it. He passed away in 2008. So this is like a cool little moment for me. I'm excited, I can't wait. It's uh, He's super influential in who I am as a wrestler and who I am as a person. So uh, it's a little, little remembrance to him. I can't wait. I do, I do a count of, do I go count up? Uh, you're you got five, 15 now, right? You're 10. Okay. I'm going to give you the 10. Give me the 10, I also went 10. First stop, first match down. Um, it couldn't have gone any better, and I mean that wholeheartedly. When I set out on this I Miss Wrestling tour, uh, 
But that match I just had was what exactly what I had in mind. Uh, I'm trying to refine my love for professional wrestling, but I'm also trying to just have kick-ass matches with guys that uh, haven't been given their big break yet. And Cam is 100% one of those guys. And so if I can draw the eyes that are on me and then put them on him to help him out while helping my career, that's like uh, best of both worlds. <laughs> That was awesome. Holy thank you. shit, that was a blast. Thank you. Everything okay? Of course. It was awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, dude. You. Dude, that was fun as fuck. Well. That was so much fun. Thank you. Thanks, that was boss. Awesome. Thank you. Dude, that was, that was great. Oh, corporate. Dude, that, I can't say it. They couldn't have awesome. gotten any better, right? I know, right? I loved it. That was great. Oh, I can't believe we've never like touched before. No, no. Seriously. That was incredible. Okay? That was the best indie match I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, I, want, I want to be in the Mike Bennett business. Oh, okay. It's all here. It's all here. It's all here. You know, uh, weigh out the pros and cons. I don't. I don't have a ton of cons. Cons. It's it's freaking cold. Pros. This has been awesome. The crowd was awesome. The welcome uh, or please come back chant. Uh, just yeah. After um, after three years of like feeling pretty much worthless in this industry and to have that happen. Because uh, I've been at Ring of Honor and there's been no crowd, so you can't really gauge it. But to have that that feeling, I, I can't. Uh, it's I'll remember tonight for a long time. That was awesome. Next is on to Oklahoma City. Um, you know, I feel like we might have peaked on this tour already, but uh, I'm excited. I keep the locker room here was great, and so they're young, they're hungry, they're nice, they're motivated, they're professional. So. Uh, Hoping each town we hit is like that. If not, we'll just make the most of it, but this has been a blast so far. Apparently, everyone's freaking out over this winter storm that's coming through Dallas and Oklahoma City. Uh, I don't know how many inches they're supposed to get, but the thing with the south is, even when you get like two inches, everything shuts down. It's not like that in Illinois or in Massachusetts. We get two inches and they, they send you out in your shorts and a tank top. So, trying to hit the road, hopefully get to Oklahoma City before they <laughs> shut us down, but uh, I'm used to it, who cares. Today we have the day off, so I think we're gonna kinda have a little fun, look around, do some stuff that we don't, wouldn't normally do because we're in Texas, maybe go to Funko Pop store. Uh, who the hell knows, see where the day takes us. We have all day to get to Oklahoma City, so, and I think it's only like a three hour drive. So, uh, this is something I didn't get to do on the road with WWE because you're constantly go, go, go. But this one I get to actually take some time and enjoy myself. So I'm pumped. Let's go. Let's go explore freezing cold Dallas. What the hell? I look like I just ran through like a, a, a snow field. Is that even a thing? A field of snow. I'm covered in salt. This, this, is, this is the shit I hate about the winter. Not only is it cold and miserable, but then you get like, look at the windshield. What the hell is that? What, like, why is it, why is everything always white? What the hell is this? It's lame. And then you run out of windshield wiper fluid every other day. At least it's not too frozen. I think one of the coolest things about being a professional wrestler is uh, traveling the country and having the opportunity to chat with fans and to just interact with the people from that area. Um, and it's especially cool when they collect Funko Pops because my wife actually collects Funko Pops. So uh, it's gonna be neat when I get to grab a few here and bring them home for her. There was just, there was always supposed to be an end game to it. Yeah. And like the way it works there is Vince gets tired of something and then like- well, they, I'm gonna be honest with you. When y'all y'all started that angle, it didn't last very long. But when uh, 
Lashley and Lana did that <laughs> angle. Oh my God! Well, then I just, think they went a little overboard. Oh, they then they just abandoned stuff too, like when they had they Liv Morgan come out for the wedding, and yeah. that didn't go well. So they just said, they "We won't mention." I mean, it again. because you, the way that they were all over each other on TV, yeah. you thought they were really doing yeah, something, yeah. you know. He's working. He's the best. He's working. We did that scene in the doctor's office where like he was pretending to give birth and like we couldn't get through it. We were laughing so hard. Because he was just like, uh oh Mike, my water broke and like he would just dump water and I just lost it every time. I'm like, I'm not professional to do this. He is perfect for that though. Oh he's so good. Made for him. I love that dude so much. You know. How often do you spend in the gym? Uh, I'm usually there about five days a week. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what I told her? I said, look, I got a photo here of Jason Statham. <laughs> 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 and she had to take a double. I wish. I wish. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you just glance at your photo, you yeah, look yeah, like right. Jason Statham, man. I'll take it. I'll take yeah, it. Exactly. It's fine. All day. It could, be, could be worse. Could always yeah. be worse. Oh. Yeah, two different kinds. Oh, you definitely have to give a lot of They're yours. Know, yeah. If you guys want t shirts, I got them. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. Nice. that's very cool. Nice. Well, who's in this series? Or that same one? Same one, same I just different, different, uh, different undies. Oh, I see. <laughs> Next stop is Wichita Falls, Texas, and the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. Um, I honestly have no idea what to expect from this, uh, but I am a huge history fan and a huge wrestling history fan, so I'm super excited to see what this place holds. The Hall of Fame was actually started in uh, 2001, right? and it, uh, they inducted their first class in 2002. It started in upstate New York, and then it was... Uh, Moved to Texas just about five years ago. Oh, nice. This is really cool. Thanks for having us, by the way. Hey, absolutely. I'm really excited Thanks to look around. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, um, I'm on the board of directors for the Hall of Fame. Watch your foot there with that. Uh, <laughs> I'll burn myself. Um, we uh, have a panel that uh, puts together the ballots in the fall of each year, and then the ballots go out to uh, historians and wrestlers and uh, Hall of Famers. Right. Uh, every fall, living Hall of Famer gets sent out a ballot. Now they don't all, always come back. Most right. of them do, but uh, um, then we count them up and we decide. You know, we'll, we don't decide. We just we just see who's see who is the, one. the yeah. top vote getter or getters. And, and do you guys have like a ceremony too? We do. We have our induction ceremony. We try to keep it the weekend after Mother's Day. Okay. But of course, uh, things uh, being the way they are, right we missed yeah. uh, we missed 2020. Yeah. These are our Hall of Famer plaques over here on, oh, the, cool. on this wall. That's real cool. Oh, okay. Everybody from, from 2002 to 2019, you know, you, it, it's a who's who. It, it, yeah. It's a, it's a Hall of Fame. It's amazing. Um, by the way, there's a... Uh, there's something you might be interested in. Maybe. <laughs> I know that girl. Who's that? <laughs> maybe we should date. I don't know. She's uh, out of my league. Yeah, she, she might be out of my she's league. She's fairly good looking. Yeah. Yeah, this ring was built in the late 1800s. 
and it was uh, originally at the New York Polo Grounds. It eventually found its way to uh, uh, Madison Square Garden, some of the classic hack and smith gotch matches from, you know, the 19 aughts <laughs> yeah. took place in, in this ring. So Holy cow. This is, a, this is a really cool thing yeah. for us here. of the chandelier from the Hart family house up in Calgary. Cool. And uh, a guy from town was just going through and the caretaker said, hey, you, you want a piece of this? And yeah. of course, Ross Hart was here for an induction a and couple signed of it. years ago. So he signed Very it. Very cool. That's, uh, you know, the, the, the weird stuff kind of a piece. Oh, I love it, too. yeah. And here's another really weird piece as well. This is the curling machine that gorgeous George used. <laughs> in the 40s to curl his hair. Good. And we got a picture of him right here with oh, that thing picture. strapped to his melon. Weird, weird things that we have in the hall. Um, Mick donated his uh, white leather couch that he sat on while he was writing his best-selling novels out longhand. Ah. So this is this is Mick's couch, and we can take a picture of Mick sitting with Mick and sitting his on couch. his white couch. So yeah, that's that's another. I would uh, I'd be remiss if I said I hadn't sit, sat in this. It's been some hours. Yeah, these were uh, Bruiser Brody's dumbbells that he worked out with. Of course they were. The 85s. Yeah, just lightweight. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> of course, uh, Stan Hansen right behind him and they had to have them together. So oh, I love Stan Hansen. Hansen. This is the actual Sportatorium sign from, awesome. the, from the building in Dallas. and. Uh, that was taken off the building the night before they dozed it and uh, we're, we're super lucky to have it yeah and, you know if you watched any world-class tv in the oh, yeah. 80s and or you know uh you, you remember that building i love this picture right here next to it with it uh you know that's the picture in the sportatorium We have uh, Fritz's 1981 desk calendar that shows, you know, who was who was booked, what they what they drew each night, and who was on the card for, you know. And this is this is a four dollar an average ticket. <laughs> and, you know, they're drawing, you know, six seven grand, and you look at the holidays. Of course, they're going to be drawing big money. Too. Yeah. Appreciate no, it. It's an honor. It's Thanks a pleasure. Thanks for your donation, and uh, we'll make sure this gets displayed. Thank you. Real quickly. I'm humbled. Like this is, this is why I became a wrestler. This is awesome. Paid for. Uh, 
this is sometimes the worst part of traveling, getting to the hotel and then having to wait. But, uh, you know, take the good with the bad. What can you do? But, yeah, this is the crappy part about traveling. But the person at the front desk has been wonderful. Absolutely delightful. Not her fault. No one's fault. So, what are you going to do? You know? on this trip yet. I think we're halfway through the trip. Snow for the car. I mean, this wouldn't be a trip without sh shit weather. That's just the amount of times when I, I'm on the Indies now, but before when I was on the Indies, the amount of shit weather I drove in up in New England. I once drove home from, uh, the hell was it? Uh, White River Co Connect, right? White River Junction, Vermont, uh, to Carver, Massachusetts, and like a blizzard. We did the show, and then the blizzard just hit. And that's like a, I think it's like a four-hour drive, and it was like, it was way worse than this. It was like a, a times a million. We were literally driving this slow on the highway. It was, it was brutal. You couldn't see anything either. I remember we, st we, th we thought we had been driving forever and we stopped at like a rest stop and we we're like, where are we? And the woman's like, so it's such and such place. And we're like, how far is that from Massachusetts? She's like, you guys still got like three hours left. We're like, what the fuck? We still did it though, we made it home. I, if I remember correctly, the further south we got into uh, like New Hampshire and Massachusetts, the better the weather got. So maybe the, the roads, the, the travel picked up from there, but it was, it was like this on the highway. It was brutal. <laughs> Does it have a thrift store? <laughs> Did I book a show at a thrift store? Is it in here? What, what are we doing? Oh well, no. <laughs> well, we're here. It is the thrift store, isn't it? Maybe I can pick up some old clothes. <laughs> Where are we going? I feel like it's on the other side. What's the day? I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Of course. This right now is the this is what I remember about the Indies. Shitty weather, can't find the building. No one will pick up their phone. This is it, this is, this is my dream. Do you know why I know I love it? Because I'm still laughing about it. I feel like if this was a few years ago, I would have been like, fuck this, I'm going home. <laughs> Sorry guys, we're going back home. No, this is funny. I don't see a ring truck or anything. I see like, nothing. I, there's, there's back my fucking oh, gimmicks. Oh, God. Woo! Oh, I wonder if I can even hold my bags in this. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, it's not your fault. 
unless you can control the weather, then I will hold you responsible for it. This place reminds me of where I first started in uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts. It was a building just like this. The guy rented out. Um, there's actually a flea market slash wrestling training center. And uh, it has, the smell is the same. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like the, the wood or the, it's just, this is what it reminds me of. It's, it had the same feel. The ceilings were low, so they had a lower ring. Um, yeah, it was in a strip mall. It was uh, not in a good part of town in New Bedford. This, this seems like it's in a better part of town, but in New Bedford it was, it was not. But this is really cool. I dig this. We're trying to start tagging. We don't really right now much, okay. but we have like, have like five tag members. Right, yeah. right. Um, so you guys usually baby face or heel? Heel right now. Heel? I'd like to be baby face. Yeah, okay, so the one thing I'll teach you about heel tag team work that always helped out me was you instantly want to cut the ring off if you're a heel, and I'm sure you've been told this before, but if this is your corner, and that's the baby face corner, once you get into a certain point of the match, like, you don't want to let the baby face get over there because his go-to is the tag, right. you know? So if you can isolate one person, watch all the good tag teams. They'll literally, like uh, the Revival, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll cut this ring right in half. And it's like, if they get into the heat, boom, 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 tag, you'll very rarely, rarely see them let them get, get over there because you have to start thinking of a tag team match of like, again, it's not real life, but if you can put it into real life context, it helps that way because it's like, if you isolate one person, think in your head, all right, what's the, what do I not want him to do? And that would be to tag his partner because then there's a fresh body to come in. Di obviously, it's, it's difficult right now with what's going on. Clearly, if I was here in another time, I wouldn't be wearing this thing up across my face. Um, but you, if that's your goal and that's your dream, you need to start branching out. So you have to figure out how to do that. And if that means making some money, and then, you know, it's like, if that means living a more minimalistic lifestyle so you can save everything and get, but you need to start branching out and getting out there. And you need to just hit the road running, find where you want to go, what you want to do, reach out to places, be unapologetic about how bad you want to fucking do this. If you want it that bad, just go get it. It went really good, uh, just it's cool. Well, one thing I feel like I learned is just sticking around wrestling and just staying into it and just actually going out there and getting in, not, not staying around in this area, I think will be will help out a lot. Tightening up some basic stuff that we learn every week. I mean, you can let it go sloppy no matter how long you're out of the ring, so it's really helpful to have a guy as big as Mike help us on such little stuff because little stuff matters around. A friend of mine, uh, Mr. Bishop, he uh, contacted me, oh, contacted me a, a few days ago and said that Mike was doing a uh, I Love Wrestling tour and needed a place to be in Oklahoma on Valentine's Day. And I said, hey, how does he feel about not feeling his feet or fingers? Because I know a place running in a blizzard. Uh, just kidding. But I, uh, yeah, I got him here at All Star. Uh, Brandon Barricades, the booker here, and he was on short notice able to bring him in. And so uh, hopefully it should be fun if we get a couple people in this place and uh, have a good match. How's AEW? Oh man, good. <laughs> good. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we've been doing stuff with the vlogs. It's kind of been helping me get over online yeah. and stuff. So good, man. that's been the biggest thing. Yeah. Just develop relationships with people there to help me. You're there all the time, fight. aren't you? Yeah, every week. That's I've been good, ever man. since October. I've been there every week. You'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be here full time. <laughs> I hope so. That's we'll how see. it works. Yeah. My name is Fuego Del Sol. 
Uh, we are in Oklahoma City in the freezing cold. Uh, about to do a tag match tonight. Me and Mike Bennett versus uh, Gideon Vane. And uh, this new young kid. I'm excited to see what he, how, he, how he works for the first time. But it's going to be a fun one. I haven't talked to Mike in about three years. Uh, we did a seminar together, and he really took a liking to me, and he saw something in me, and here we are three years fast forward later. I'm doing AEW stuff, and uh, he's back in ROH, and our paths meet again, and it's uh, going to be a fun night, even in this freezing cold snow. It's uh, the epitome of independent wrestling, especially during this COVID era, uh, doing a show like this in the weather that it is, in this cold locker room. But uh, I'm excited about it, man. Mike, oh, yeah, Mike, having Mike here is great. Uh, awesome dude. Uh, Pretty humble guy from what I can see so far. Uh, man, I'm just, I'm just glad he's here. Fuego's here. You know, Gideon's here. There's, there's a lot of people that, that drove through this through the storm that made it here. And I'm just surprised, you know, like how much heart that these people actually have. We got diehard fans that came here, like through the snow, like three foot of snow, two foot of snow. They're here. Everybody's here, man. And I'm glad that we're just at least doing this, you know. Is it 15? Yeah. That was more than I thought. Hopefully they give a shit about me and they can warm the building up a little bit. Oh my god. I'm not even upset though, I'm excited. I just want to wrestle. And stay warm at the same time. Let's get started! Let's get started! As you can tell, our owner, Brandon, what a great guy. He said, you know what? No storm is going to stop us. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the Let's national get this anthem. Get going. A little towel, then you do the reach, and then you do the pull. And then nobody sees nothing. Not that I want them to see anything. They'd actually be, be terrified. But there's an art form to it. If I don't freeze first. Jesus. No. Did y'all wipe your feet before you came in here? Yeah, you can talk to me easily about that in the ring. We can do whatever he y'all want to do. Like I said we worked through that little thing in the corner earlier. I wrestled him a thousand times. So I know all of his stuff. Uh, so we just got to lock down that comeback finish. It's really it's a good comeback. What do you want to do for you? Hot tag. Uh, touch. I'll come in if you want to throw a line. I'll duck. I'll come. I'll fucking spiff you off. Um, yeah, just do whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'll turn around. I'll start like, yeah, boom. Go back to a corner. Right. Boom. I'll send you to one corner. Boom. I'll charge. Close on you in that corner. Second corner. Back. Oh, same thing. Yeah. Come off. I'll hit this rope. And I'll hit you with a fucking running for him. No, they have that well actually that's all they have. They like the roads aren't plowed, they're just dumping, <laughs> dumping salt on it. It's yeah, so weird. Hey there because uh, yeah. otherwise you're gonna get one of those car accidents. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm sure that it's like and the people don't know how to drive in that either. So no, much. that's what Brandon was saying. He's like, I'm not worried about us driving, I'm worried about the people around us. Oh yeah, because they said over the clip. Yeah. No, who are you wrestling tonight? Uh, it's me and, uh, remember Fuego Del Sol? Yeah. Me and him are teaming against, uh, this kid Drew and another guy Derek. Okay. Yeah. I'm pumped. I'm excited for it. Oh, well, that'll be fun. Yeah. Enjoy. I will. 
Uh, it's so cold in this building, we are. Really? Oh my Please god. I'm so cold. <laughs> well, there's only three matches on the show. There's 14 people out there. This is this is a, this is this is good for the documentary. <laughs> Derek's laughing at me. All right, Drew's laughing at me. What? Show. I'm not. No, I did. Everyone, uh, the two guys I'm working know what know exactly what they're doing. So I'll be fine. So we're at a show here, Oklahoma City, three card show, blizzard, blizzard conditions, it never happens down here, uh, freezing cold, and uh, 14 of their diehard fans have arrived. Uh, Marie is very worried about me, she told me not to get hurt, told me to warm up, she's very worried about us driving after this, she's uh, scolded me not to drive, uh, and so uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. This is, uh, this is good though, I wanted all the... The, uh, the feeling of the independence. So, uh, I, I love this ship. I love it. Uh, and this shirt's like wet and cold. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> fuck my life. I think you got a dryer back there. <laughs> fuck me, Ryan. <laughs> Holy dog shit. <coughs> Do you get? Do you catch my 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 hard nips? <laughs> Make sure you get those on cam. Yeah. I should take this off. Fight. Hey, thank you for coming out. That headlock, you got the 16. There's a there's a the advantage on the height. Oh, man. Oh, man. Ah. Ah. Man, it's double 
one, baby! So I'm gonna keep this short and right to the point. For the next 10 days, I'm traveling all around the country and doing these shows just like this, being in the ring with guys just like this, because for the last three years, I lost my love for professional wrestling. And places like this, and people that will drive in a blizzard, and in a snowstorm, to come and support guys like us, and the guys in the back, this is what the damn business has always been about. We love wrestling! We love wrestling! We love wrestling! You love wrestling, I love wrestling, Fuego loves wrestling. I'll tell you what, it's guys like him, like the two guys we just wrestled, everyone you've seen, all the independents across the globe, across the world, that is the backbone of this industry. We built this industry, this is our industry, we're gonna take it back, and we're gonna put on damn fine wrestling shows for the best fans in the world, like each and every one of you, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting me do this tonight. And not only that, Keep track of this guy, because he's about to be the biggest star in all of professional wrestling. I've seen stars, I've been in the ring with the stars. He's right up there. Fuego's what's next. You cheer for this man, I'm out. Fuego! 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 Oh, it was really good, actually. Like, it was flowed easily, back and forth, no problem, man. Exactly what we wanted. I really appreciate you, man. That shitty fucking greenhorn of a referee, man. <laughs> God, that was fun, man. That was so much fun. Easy, thank easy, you guys. fun. Yeah, thank you. That's always, yeah, man. I wasn't sure what you were going. You know how I felt about you three years ago? Yeah, yeah. You've only gotten better, thank so. You, man. Yeah, thank man. you so much, man. I can't oh, wait to see your fucking rise, dude. Who, man? Huh? I mean, thank you, sir. Even if just as a referee. Likewise, dude. Thank you so much. That ended up being pretty fun. Uh, it was, uh, it's cold and uh, we're in the middle of nowhere, but I got to see my buddy Fuego. Uh, I got to wrestle uh, the kid Drew that I just met, who I think is awesome now. Uh, so it was fun. I really enjoyed this. Uh, like 14 people showed up, which is crazy that people even showed up, but this was, uh, yeah. Add this to the learning experience. I love this shit, man. I'm crazy. I must be crazy to love this. Negative nine. Come on, heat up. Give me something. Give me some life. We're, we're headed to a seminar and show in Iowa. Collins, I think, right? I think we decided it was Collins. And uh, I'm convinced it's gonna be one of these like one one stoplight towns that I drive through in Illinois all the time. And I'm trying to find the the population sign coming up, which might be this this green sign right here. No, I don't think so. What do you say? Now you're just Wolf Creek. There's not even a freaking creek there. It's all frozen over because it's negative six. What am I doing with my life? I got kids and a wife. Well, I had a wife, probably not much after this. <laughs> after doing the show in Oklahoma last night, 
uh, she said to me, I, she's like, how did you, what did you think? I was like, I had a blast. And she genuinely looked at me and went, good for you. Because I couldn't do it. And that's why we make the perfect couple. Oh, we're coming up on some signs. Population, cows. This is totally the building too, isn't it? Fuck yeah. I love this show. Oh, I gotta turn here. Never mind, that's not the building. Where is the building? Are you my, are you my mother? Are you my mother? Oh, the wellness center, that's definitely it. Right? Oh, Impact Pro Wrestling. We found this shit, can I park over here? At the gym and eat crickets? What? Oh, I get it. Oh, I, right, I have to look up the population of Collins. Collins, what's Iowa, IA? Population, 477. Fuck yeah. I have to unlock it myself. Are there keys in the. It wasn't, like I said before, I've done seminars where like, there's been one person that I would actually want to get, get in the ring with. Between your ring work and your promos, there's not a single person I saw that doesn't at least have a base that we can build off of, which is really fucking hard in this industry. There's no reason why everyone can't get a little piece of this wrestling pie. There's money to be made, there's places to go. This industry belongs to us. It doesn't belong to Vince. Doesn't belong to any company. It belongs to the fucking wrestlers that bump in this ring every single time. We dictate it. That's just how it is. We can take this industry back if we want it. And the way we take it back is by each and every one of you believing in the fact that you can get to where you want to go. Why do I know that? Because I was literally sitting there watching the people I looked up to, watching the people I admired, telling me you can go and you can go make money at WWE. You can go to Ring of Honor. And I sat there and I was like, yeah. I did, when I was... 19, Kevin Kelly, who's now a really, really good friend of mine, did a seminar. And he said to me, he looked in the room, there was like 17 people. He said, one of you will probably make it.
Mike Bennett was excellent. It was really inspiring to hear somebody give you good feedback and not negative feedback. This is my first seminar. I loved it. Uh, definitely going to do more when they're available. Uh, I learned a lot. Learned a lot about personality and ring, ring awareness and things like that. And I think Mike Bennett was great. Uh, I'd like to learn a lot more from him if I could. Mike Bennett's seminar, easily the best seminar I've ever been a part of. I mean, super chill dude, super educational. I got very personal with each person uh, who signed up for the seminar, and there were quite a lot of people, but I thought, you know, they did a great job overall. I was really happy to be a part of it. I did learn. I learned a lot about promos and how to take my time and sit in my poopy and just to not talk so fast. I thought it was great. I thought his seminar was excellent. Um, he touched on a lot of things about promo wise and just said, hey, relax, have fun, enjoy wrestling. Mike Bennett gave me the power to know that there's somewhere to go in this business, no matter what you want to do. You know, he really related to us. You know, someone being green in this industry, you know, he really gave me a lot of confidence. Like, if he can make it, you know, why can't I? Mike Bennett's amazing, man. It's definitely one of the best guys we've had come through. And we've had a lot of good guys come through. Hacksaw came through one day, and I still think he probably did better than Hacksaw. So, Mike Bennett, do double thumbs up from the shake, man. You get definitely approved from me, man. So hopefully, I can, you know, just take this as a great learning experience, move on forward, and just continue to add to my repertoire and try to uh, impress people someday. It's been awesome. It's been a great experience. Um, the guys, everybody's had great feedback. He was positive. Um, yeah, it's been a real fun. It's been a great, great time having him here. This is probably one of the best seminars I've ever been to. Not to like suck up or anything, but the amount of time and like, everyone got a chance to go, and um, we all got really good advice that could go to all of us and not just the one person in the ring. And I walked away learning more than I've learned all the seminars <laughs> that I've taken before. Um, it was a really cool, really cool experience. Man, this was fun. This was a good one. Uh, this uh, this trip, roller coaster ride so far, and this one just put me at the peak because I'm not kidding when I tell you that these guys and girls here at Impact Pro Wrestling, they're they're legit, man. They they got good training. They're talented. Not a single person froze up when it was time for promos. Everyone was selling. Everyone's bumps were crisp. It was just uh, it was really inspiring to see. Everyone's talking about like oh WWE scooping up all these indie talents and AEW's taking all these indie talents. What's the future of independent wrestling? Shit, it's in good hands. I'm telling you, having done a show in Texas and then a show in the here uh, and, and a seminar here, there's a lot of good talent that are on their way up, and I'm excited to to wrestle them and to be in the ring with them and to watch them just kind of prosper. And, and a bunch of these people here, I guarantee you, are going to be making names for themselves in wrestling. It was kick-ass today. Uh, Collins, Iowa. There is a skate park upstairs. So the entire seminar, you could just hear people doing ollies, kick flips, face plants. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Ask Tony Hawk. But it sounds like people are bowling upstairs. pretty good about it though. I can tell. Based on all the uh, guys and girls here, I ain't worried. I'm pretty excited. Uh, he's in great shape. He's wrestled great guys. And I mean, just to uh, be in the same ring with them is going to be an honor. Alberta, Canada, weighing in at 
95 kilo, kilos. AJ Smooth. It's the first one. So much fun. Uh, besides Friday, that was one of the that was up there with Friday night's match. That was holy shit. That was fun. Yeah, I love it. I love this shit, man. I, that's all I'm gonna say. I love this. Shit. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. I will. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, oh, that was the, that was the kick-ass show, man. Kick-ass show, kick-ass seminar. Uh, yeah, I don't have enough good things to say about that place. More people need to know about this place. They know how to train. They know how to cut promos. Uh, they know how to wrestle and they're trained properly. They got kick-ass trainers. It was a pleasure to be a part of that. I'm fucking cold. I'm so old. 
all done with the gym. This was an actually pretty nice hotel gym. We haven't really hit a real gym, but that's weird during COVID, I think. But oh well, gym done, Kansas City. Uh, I am sore as shit this morning, but that's to be expected. So now I'm gonna shower and then off to Amish country. <laughs> Weather seems, well, this says negative two, but it doesn't feel like negative two out. Weather seems to be warming up a smidge, negative two. We were at negative 11 this morning, so negative two is a win. I feel good, a little sore, but um, yeah. Got a really good workout in this morning, so I'm in a good mood. Yeah. You know how people get like dogs so that yeah. they don't have to pick up all the crumbs? Right. We have a big. Yeah, I told you, I was, I, was, I was telling Brandon earlier, I said it was, uh, I think on this morning we were on the phone for 30 minutes and he picked up and ate five different things. <laughs> Look at his outfit. What is he wearing? Hi, buddy. Oh my God, he looks so grown up right now. Hi. Hi, buddy. I want to be, I don't know. One, one tiny bit of your story, one little bit of helping that journey because you're gonna get help along the way. Um, I had help everywhere I went. If it wasn't for Adam Pierce and Jim Cornette and Delirious, I never would've got signed with Ring of Honor. Uh, if it wasn't for Carl Anderson, I never would've gone over to New Japan. If it wasn't for Billy Corgan and David Lagana, uh, I never would've gone to Impact. And if it wasn't for Kevin Owens, I never would've gone to WWE. So everyone along the way has helped me and lend a hand and said, let me help you. Let me reach out to this person. Let me do something. Do a seminar, this and that. You guys all did fucking great. Again, I did the seminar last night. My, my instinct was like, okay, this is gonna be the best one. And you guys fucking did even better. Like, it's, I, I'm blown away at the amount of talent that's on the Indies right now. Like, this is crazy to me. Crazy. Um, and I wanna help. I really do. That's why I'm here. I want you guys to succeed. And not only do I want you to succeed, I'm here to tell you that you can fucking succeed. This business is tough. I'm not gonna fucking lie to you guys. This is a tough business. It's a negative business. It's an egotistical business. I'm trying to change that. I want it to be a more positive, uplifting business. But right now, we gotta fight through that. It's a tough business. If you guys wanna succeed, you're gonna miss a lot of weddings and birthdays and, and, and all that shit. You're gonna have people tell you why you're doing that. You're gonna look into your bank account and see zero dollars and be like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I've been doing this 20 years. I've wrestled for WWE, New Japan, ROH, Impact. Sometimes I still look in the mirror and go, what the fuck am I doing with my life? But it's worth it. I promise you it's worth it. Best fucking feeling. My dad took me to see Mick Foley. I told him I'm gonna be a WWE wrestler. He 
he said, okay, sure. Never said no, but just kind of like, oh, this, this fat old wear out. One of the proudest moments of my life. My dad's a lawyer, like I said. I took on my WWE contract so he could look it over, and he said, I am really proud of you. The seminar, it was great. One of the, probably the best seminar I've been to so far. Uh, Mike was just very helpful and put instilled in my brain like a lot of things that I never really thought about. And then even things that I've thought about before, he kind of just made me rethink those things and realize that there's different ways to go about how I was doing all the things I was already doing. It was it was a lot more than I uh, expected. I honestly I didn't know what, it, what to expect. This is my first seminar. Um, um, I feel a lot more inspired. The seminar was phenomenal. Just uh, I like I like the fact that he sits down and he takes each person individually and he finds something with each person, and everything that he does connects back to everybody else. So it's not just information for one person; it's one person's information that applies to everybody. So that's that's something that I really liked about it. I really like the positive overall tone to it. I really like I like that. Uh, the positivity was a good thing mm -hmm. while also doing constructive building. When I got in there, Mike was really helpful. Um, he critiqued things that I needed to work on. I was just really good. What was great about Mike is that he pulled each and every one of us and specifically tailored his entire seminar on our needs and our uh, weaknesses and strengths. Um, it's because of people like Mike that this business is still thriving for, you know. Uh, he creates a completely different experience than what I'm used to. Yeah, Mike Bennett is fucking lovely. He's a lovely dude, man. I learned so much. I got like half a page, no, more than half a page, almost two pages of notes just based off of something different each person can do. And it really helped me that, you know, it's just really hard to come come by with really down earth people in professional wrestling still. And I love that. I love that. If you don't want to counter it, you can move and then hit me with something, you know what I mean? You move out of the way, I eat shit, something, or I charge, you fucking super kick me out, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever you think you usually do. So, let's go from the corner. So I'll hit the DVD, one, two, you kick out, you're selling up, I'll start to go for the spear, get up, get up, I'll charge. Oh shit! Turn. Scoop. Power slam. Okay. Cool. Do you want me to come quick, or do you like to go slow with it? Either way. Okay. Cool. Whatever cool. your pace. Power slam. Power slam. One, two, kick. seminar today. I'd love to have a match with one of their, their best students. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know how it's going to go. Ten, li ten minute little match. Uh, have some fun. I'm excited about it. Uh, this kid's a real shooter, so he might kill me. is number four and uh, every single show to this point has been different. Uh, the first show was just this professionally run independent with kick-ass guys and girls on it. The second one was in the middle of a snowstorm in uh, Oklahoma City that nobody showed up to. Uh, no one showed up to the seminar either. The third one, great seminar, great student show, just a fucking kick-ass time. This one, another great seminar. The show is kind of just a, a, a fuck-around show for the students, but uh, they got a lot of good students here, so I'm super excited.
love that curtain, baby. He's here. My man's here. Yeah, that went well. He's, uh, he's a real deal. He made me remember some of my chain wrestling that I forgot over the last 20 years, but uh, that was fucking fun, man. I love getting in there with someone that actually knows how to fucking wrestle and do that shit and challenge me and take me out of my comfort zone. That's what he did. I fucking love it. Guy can fucking go. Good shit. breaks for some fun and two more things to do one seminar one show and i am going home can't fucking wait i miss my wife i miss my kids i miss my bed i miss not having to do this shit every time let's go Uh, what's going on with you? Uh, I have uh, really bad neck pain and soreness. Uh -huh. um, it started like, I don't know, it's, I'm a wrestler, so it's 
progressively got worse over time. But for the past year, it's like right in the middle here, but it does spread out to like my traps. Um, I thought it was muscular for the most part. That's what it feels like when I put like any kind of like biofreeze on it, it tends to feel better. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's hard for me to like, I usually have to turn the whole body to, All right. to look behind me. So my assessment is, is he's got some range of motion issues in his neck. Um, the joint mobilization I was talking about is really more of uh, loosening up the, the uh, tissues around the joints that are in his neck. We've got tons and tons of joints in your neck from your vertebrae. And so we'll get in there and we'll work on that. Uh, the table warmer on. So oh, it's, it's lovely. I, I know I could already feel it. It was okay. <laughs> wonderful. Twenty years of beating the crap out of my body has caught up to me, and I have some neck pain, some neck lack of range of motion. So I haven't had a massage in forever because of COVID. So this will be nice. Uh, but yeah, after four matches the last one <laughs> the last day this uh this neck didn't want to move so i'm hoping this kind of loosens everything up and can keep me keep me moving for the next few years <laughs> Amazing. That was so good. She like targeted right where it hurt too, which was she was able to kind of loosen me up a little bit, which felt really good. And she also kind of made me realize that it was probably whiplash because she was like, "You feel like it was a whiplash event." And it reminded me of when it actually started hurting, and I got kicked in the back of the head, and my head went forward, and I remember that feeling of like, "Whoa, what was that?" And then right back to the match. Uh, but then I remember after the match, that's when it started hurting. So she kind of triggered in my brain when I probably did it. And I probably got really bad whiplash from that kick. So this was a good idea. So I think one of the biggest, uh, you know, contrast, if I will, about working at WWE and then doing this tour or being on the indies is that the WWE, you're making a good amount of money, but you're never appreciated, as opposed to doing this, you're making far less money, but it feels like you're very much appreciated and everything you do is very much appreciated. And um, now, I mean, there's pros and cons to everything. Pros, you're making money, you can take care of your family, but the cons of not being appreciated and making money is you're miserable. Uh, and I know that's difficult for a lot of people to understand, but uh, yeah, it's at the end of the day, what good is money if you can't be happy about it? What good is trying to provide for your family if you're just a miserable human being every time you go home? That doesn't, it's not, I would rather make less money and be happy than make a ton of money and be miserable. Yeah, so we got two more days left of actual, um, professional wrestling stuff before I make the 14 and a half hour trek home from Denver to Illinois and um, we got a seminar at Rocky Pro um, we were told there was going to be a good turnout I'm very excited to find out I, I always enjoy um, when there's a lot of people there I can feel the energy and and vibe off of it so this seminar I'm really looking forward to all the seminars have been great they probably have been my favorite part of the trip uh, I mean getting in the ring and wrestling has been fun but the seminar is always like I, I, I do them because I genuinely like to help and, and try to help the, the younger talent but selfishly it helps me out because it's constantly keeping my mind going like I feel more creative after this trip just because at a seminar I'm forced to watch what people are doing in the ring and forced to think about actual pro wrestling where if you're not in the environment it's very difficult to try to think about wrestling but once you jump in the fire um yeah i, I always feel like after seminars i uh my creative juices are always flowing we would this trip we've done seminars and then i'd get back to the hotel and i've had like i, I probably have written like two pages worth of notes in my my phone of stuff i want to do uh, angles I want to do, 
spots I want to try, moves I want to try, just different types of promos I want to cut. Just by talking to these kids, or I should say kids, they're men and women, uh, just by talking to them and, and that that gets my creative juices flowing. So this is another seminar tonight um, and then tomorrow it is a show. I think I'm wrestling twice, which I am excited about, but I am definitely feeling the altitude up here, so I could probably be sucking wind within the first two minutes, and I gotta wrestle two matches. I don't know. I don't know how impressive I'm gonna look. But um, yeah, I'm looking to close this out on a, a pretty high note. We are at Rocky Mountain Pro. We're gonna go do a seminar. I'm still trying to breathe with this altitude. And uh, yeah, this is the last stop. Not the last day, but the last stop. We'll do this and then a same place, same same Mike Bennett time, same Mike Bennett channel tomorrow. And uh, then I get to see the kiddos. So these people are either gonna get the best seminar of their life or the worst one I haven't decided yet. So I'm Mercury, Matt Yaden, I'm the owner of Al Snow Wrestling Academy Rocky Mountain and we are the school for Rocky Mountain Pro. Uh, we're in Denver, Colorado inside Fast Performance Center which is the home of the school and also the promotion. I love having Mike here, uh, somebody with the experience that he has can come in and give our students uh, a whole other insight that they might not have, not have received. The great thing about running a school is finding those opportunities to bring in talent that has experiences that the coaches here don't have so then they can bring in their own flavor, their own experiences because we really want everybody here to have a well-rounded education. So it's been, uh, it's been something we've always uh, uh, strive to do is bring in these seminars and we appreciate Mike being willing to come in and, and pass his knowledge along to all the students here. We've literally on this trip, oh, I'm gonna burp, we've literally on this trip hit every aspect of independent wrestling which I love. First show a, a brewery, second show Oklahoma City and like a flea market, third I don't even remember. Third, Iowa, which was just a tiny school, but it was awesome. Fourth was, uh, was fourth, Kansas City. Another kind of a flea market type vibe. And then finish it off at this cool performance center, which is badass. And I just kind of want to work out here like every single day of my life. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. It looks like they got their shit together. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. We'll see, who knows. I think Alex was saying there's 34, 35 or something like that. That's, I'm blown away by this, legit. Like, and I'll say it when I do this seminar, but I'm blown away people give a shit what I have to say. So I'm super excited to do this. Like, holy shit, she just cut, cut the promo over a lifetime, and now you have to try to keep up. That's, I don't give a shit about that. I, I can see past that. Yeah. Hers was good, yours was good. I can see directly past that. I'm not trying to judge anyone. I'm trying to help you get better. This industry rewards the people that keep going, that keep moving. You don't have to be the most talented, but you do have to be the most driven, and you do have to be the hardest worker. Some of the guys at WWE are not the most talented, but they are the most hardest workers I've ever come, come across at all. Same thing with Ring of Honor, same thing in Impact. Those guys work their ass off, they perfect their craft. I have a wonderful life now because of professional wrestling. I met my wife through professional wrestling. I was able to buy a house because of professional wrestling. And I'm not telling you guys this to brag. I'm telling you guys this to look at me as an inspiration. To say, oh, okay, if Mike can do it, I can fucking do it. I don't want to brag. I don't give a shit. I'm a very simple human. But I want you guys to know that if you put the time in, if you put the effort in, you will succeed. You will. Especially now. There's so many places to go. Indescribable. That's the best way I can really put it forward because once you're in that ring, the spotlight's on you. And once that spotlight's on you, all the emotions come out and it's really expressive in a comfort feeling and environment. So 
I really appreciate him for bringing that aspect out and so much more. Uh, the seminar for me with Mike here was life changing, um, not to be cliche, but um, it was just a very eye opening experience. Um, just to work with someone with his caliber, with his resume, um, just to give me a straight shot of truth, no chaser, I, nothing but respect. Um, just to take in everyone's feedback that they got from, from Mike, um, it was a learning experience with them and, and applying some of the uh, notes that he. Uh, gave them to my own repertoire is gonna, gonna be pretty fun, so. So it's like midnight, it's, uh, hell yeah, man. We stayed there burning the, what do they say? Burning the midnight candle, burning the midnight tequila, something like that, that's what we're doing. But everyone stuck around, there was like 40 people that showed up, who the fuck gives a shit what I have to say? Uh, but they were awesome, this place, Rocky Mountain Pro, man, they have, they have legit students, this whole tour, like, I keep expecting to see some bad people, and there were a few, but for the most part, man, yeah, independent wrestling's in good hands, especially out here, Rocky Mountain Pro. They got a cool facility. I just, I really thought I was gonna see some shitty wrestling, and I'm just so happy that I saw so many young, hungry guys and girls, and just so many people with such a good, solid foundation. Um, it made me even more excited that I'm out of WWE, and that I get to go do shit like this, so. I'm fucking pumped. I loved it. This tour fucking kicks ass. I never thought in my 20 years of wrestling I would be thrusted into the scenario of wrestling matches in front of nobody or very minimal people. Um, I've done like, I don't know, Texas was like 100 people, Kansas or OKC was 14, a couple of these shows, nobody, just students, uh, last, last two were just student shows. Uh, and then tonight there's like 35 people here, so uh, I think maybe on this tour it's been like maybe 150 people. Um, but I don't know, it doesn't really face me, I haven't really thought anything about it. And it looks like it's showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first live 
live charge taking. of Rocky Mountain Pro. My name is Coda Jacobs, the innovator, the crusader, the pioneer, and the visionary behind the campaign for a brighter future in wrestling. Yes. Look at Jay Rivera trying to get out the advantage, but once again, Here comes this one. Oh, right from there, I'll fucking super cook you. And then I'll pick you up and get you with a fucking Samoan driver deal. Is that cool? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, I'm gonna pass by. Yeah, I'll pass by. I'll let, it'll be one motion. I'll pass you by. Spin it. Oh, South back. Super cool coming around you. Oh, shit. Samoan driver. One, two. Kick out. Okay, okay, so just, yeah, so just stand, stand and there's a no bump on this. Yeah, no bump on this. Okay, so boom, boom. Samoan. Boom. That's uh, finish. Finish. No, no, no. Kick out. Okay. It feels phenomenal to hear those fans out there again. It's uh, unbelievable. And knowing they're having such a good time, that's the best thing. That, that's the number one. And obviously you can hear it. They've been waiting to do this for a long time, so it's great. My favorite thing in the world is when you break your fucking laces. And I don't have a spare. I usually always have a spare. I don't have a fucking spare. So now I gotta tie these together and figure out to make some sort of MacGyver shit here. We'll figure it out. It's so nice to hear fans. It's so much better than complete and utter silence. I think you get used to the quiet after a while, but it's so nice to hear actually people cheering. Yeah! Oh, so good. So good. Have some fun. Uh, eventually, I'll tell you, uh, go for suplex. I'll say, turn it around. Suplex me on the fucking floor. Oh, shit. Boom. Uh, throw me in. Hit the fucking crossy. Boom. Oh, shit. Uh, one or two. If you go for a pin, cool. If not, just set me up with a fucking flippy boy. Flippy boy, I'll roll out.
constitutes no joke. Uh, 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 Atiba's the fucking man, he's great. Uh, uh, limitless possibilities, dude, Jesus. I got nothing to go, nothing but good things to say. Uh, that match was a blast. Uh, uh, I feel like these matches have been getting progressively better. Uh, uh, yeah, I got nothing. That was great. Good, good way to end it. One more, we're done. That was perfect. You good? Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. You're fucking awesome, dude. Thank you. You got instincts like a motherfucker. Thank you, man. Great shit. Thank you. Everything feel okay? Yeah. Dude, good shit. Hey, thank you. Yeah, how's, how's the timing on Oh, perfect. You thank got this shit down, man. Thank you, man. Everything feel okay on my end? Yeah. Everything, have nothing too stiff or? No, yeah, I, I felt when, you, when you're talking about the, bringing it back. Yeah. yeah. Could you feel that? Yeah. Go ahead, man. Thank dude, you. I loved it. I'm I'm ready. I'm excited to face Mike Bennett for the first time. Um, I never had the chance to get in the ring with him, so this should be fun. Uh, he's a hell of a wrestler. Um, I've faced pretty good guys before, and he's definitely going to be one of the best. Um, I've been around the Colorado wrestling scene here for over 10 years, and this is one of the greatest rosters we've had, and to have him come in here and help teach us is amazing. The title is on the apron. Sure. A title. It does. I don't give a fuck which title. Um, because you guys, do, you have one, and you have one. Yeah, is that? Yeah, I have one now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Congratulations to you. Um, so, whatever time. Fuck. That might even be perfect because you have it. Okay. Um, the idea is, I'm gonna eventually hit him with the spear, and I'm gonna call for the pile driver. Okay. As soon as I call, I'll talk, maybe I'll pull him in or something. Pop up again. But just make sure the belt is on the apron. Okay. Because I'm gonna see you and I'm gonna fucking give you this board right off the fucking apron. Okay. Oh shit! I'm gonna, the ref is gonna look at you and check on you. Like, stay the fuck down. Don't get back up here again. I'm gonna turn around. He's gonna belt shot. Okay. Okay.
Not so blown up this time. I've become acc 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 acclimated. Uh, that was an entirely different style, but I loved it. Basic heel baby face shit. I miss that stuff. Just selling, getting the baby face, sympathy, just heat. I dig that shit. I love it. Good way to end the night. Good way to end the tour. As we used to say in Japan, thank you this tour. Yeah, yeah man. Kind of like ran out of time. Like, oh, whatever. We'll just go. That's why I decided. Like, I was saying the same thing. Like, when you said that, I was like, you know what? Let's go here. When well, you said suplex, I was like, yes, that's a good Yeah. I totally thought I fucking missed the spot. Nope. You set up for the pile drive. I was like, oh shit. No, you were perfect, dude. You were perfect. Right. I feel great. Um, I feel like I had really two really good matches, two entirely different matches. Um, but I just, I love the whole vibe here. I love how everyone's positive. Um, I love how everyone's motivated. I just, it's just a really good vibe. It's a really good way to end this whole craziness tour that we decided to do. Um, but this is a good way to close it out. We've had our, our peaks, our valleys, and I feel like at the end of the day, we're, we're ending on a peak. I had two matches tonight and I'm so excited and happy that I don't even, I don't even feel sore. I know tomorrow I'm going to be a miserable human being driving home. Uh, but, um, yeah, I feel good and I'm happy it ended like this. Uh, no, guys, um, I just, uh, first, I, like I said last night, and I'm going to reiterate it tonight, again, I am truly humbled that you guys give a shit what I have to say. It means a lot to me. Um, because I still look at myself as the little kid from Carver, Massachusetts who had a dream and fucking chased it and got to live, out, live it out and that fucking kicks ass in my eyes but that you guys, like you guys have all been awesome. Like, um, I can talk about the wrestling aspect all until I'm blue in the face and you guys exceeded my expectations but what I think is more important, you guys as people and as humans exceeded my expectations. And we need more of that in wrestling, not just in wrestling, in, in, in fucking life. Right. Um, we need good quality humans. And you guys are good quality fucking humans and I, I dig that shit so very much. Um, I felt like I've been here for 20 years and this is my second day here. You've all been incredibly kind. Um, and and again, the wrestling aspect, I'm, I'm legit blown away. And Brandon will tell you, we've been all over the country from Texas to Iowa and now here. And this is the best group of guys and girls I've seen, bar none. Uh, I mean, I've, you know, it's just legit. Um, I had a match tonight that you could put in on Japanese wrestling and then I had a match tonight that you could put on WWE TV. And like I was telling you, I just want to have wrestling matches because I just I'll have that match any day of the week and then with a team I'll have that match any day of the week because I just love this fucking shit so very much and I want to that I want my energy to trickle down on you guys because like I said last night this is not an easy industry it will chew you up it will spit you up spit you out and then it will laugh at you while you're like down there like please stop and it will just keep doing it but if you keep that positive energy and you keep that vibe you will keep punching that motherfucker in the face and uh, until until you fucking get to where you want to go and like I said you will get to where you want to go you will as long as you work hard you don't have to be the most talented you just don't half the guys I've ever come in contact with at WWE New Japan are they're they're not the most talented they just work their fucking ass off and that's all I'm not here to tell you you can't do it I'm here to tell you you fucking can because I did it and you guys can fucking do it and I'm just I, I, this is my second day and I'm incredibly proud of all of you so uh, Thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting me be here. I appreciate it. So now, now the fun part. We got we got to turn this back into a, a chip. This looks like a safety hazard. I'm totally gonna eat shit. Don't laugh at me. Oh, you wanna laugh at me? Oh. It's bittersweet. This is a bittersweet moment. Uh, I started this journey and I didn't know what to expect. Um, and I'm not bullshitting anyone when I say this. This was one of probably the coolest trips I've ever taken in my entire life. I've got to meet cool people. 
Um, I had a great traveling partner that no one's ever gonna fucking see. Uh, um, but uh, it was a great trip. We went from Texas to snowstorms to little hole in the wall schools that had amazing students to like state of the art performance centers to 14 people in the crowd. It just, um, yeah, I, I'm like, this is like one of those life changing trips where you're like, oh, you're gonna look back in 20 years and be like, what was that moment? And I'm gonna look back and be like, it was this, it was this trip, this trip, this trip created it all. Um, and I can't wait to look back in 20 years. But uh, I'm so thankful I got to do it. Now, I get to go home, I get to kiss my wife, I get to hug my kids, I get to sleep in my own bed. So I am fucking out. Are you happy to be home? So happy. I'm ready. I need my own swing though. What do you think, French? Should I get my own swing? Yeah. I think I'll break this if I sit it. Maybe a hammock. <laughs>